Welcome to Infor's Governance, Risk, and Compliance Capability Demonstration Around Segregation of Duties. Meet Pam Moore, controller responsible for closely monitoring company health and risk exposure, strives for more automation, less manual efforts in risk monitoring and decreasing those audit costs. She's also responsible for providing audit reports to external auditors. And Pam is able to do that with the GRC solution, identifying any violators so that she can reduce risk of those individuals who have inappropriate access. Also, put in place automated compliance with the solution by providing perhaps a compensating control to that access, all because of policy governance around the reports and the rules that come standard in the solution. As we look at Pam's workspace, we can see in the upper left-hand side, here's a user violation report showing that John, for instance, has 24 high priority violations as defined by those sets of rules. And as we drill in on John to manage his access, Perhaps Pam wants to filter on just those rules that relate to creating or maintaining a vendor. Notice that John's got access here to create a vendor and process that payment. As Pam drills into the access through here, she can see very quickly that John's got the access here on the left-hand side provided by these roles as well as that access on the right-hand side provided by those roles. And based on how the rule is defined, John is in conflict by having that access. We can simply, Pam, up a row here, can mitigate. This is simply telling Pam she can only mitigate those assigned to her as part of the process where perhaps John needs to keep this access that he has. Maybe he's in a remote office and wears multiple hats, as an example, or perhaps we we'll want to put in additional controls where we review access either weekly or monthly as is necessary. That's one way to manage John's access. Another would be simply to invoke a, uh, a process whereby built into GRC, there's a workflow and approval processes that would perhaps, if John no longer needs this access, and after review could remove the access from John and GRC could handle that all uh, reported, all audit trail and such as part of that action as well. The rules that are very important to the system are included out of the box as part of that offering. Under design, for instance, and rule books, by simply filtering on these rules for authorizations in sight or segregation of duties, if you will, these three rule books are folders holding rules specific to, for instance, accounts payable. As we drill into the accounts payable rule book, you'll notice a list of rules, one of which is create, maintain vendor versus process a payment. If we drill into that rule, just to give some comfort around the definition of this rule, the conditions tab really pulls together ways to uh, define that rule. On the left here, creating or maintaining a vendor is identified here. And on the right, processing a payment is identified there on the right side as well. The 50 or so rules that are provided out of the box are analyzed against the users and the roles, permissions that those users have. And that's how we get to that violations report that we started with. Reports a very important part of the system as well. And you'll see that as part of the offering, these reports are provided. We started here at the violation summary report. We drilled into John's detail here at the violation detail. And for instance, if John would be excluded from that violation, he would show up on a exclusion documentation report that will detail 
who's been excluded, why, date and time stamp and such. So you can see as Pam has looked at the solution for reducing risk by identifying violators, drilling into those details, providing perhaps a compensating control or a request to remove John's access. She's automating that compliance, again, using the rules and the reports as part of controlling risks with continuous controls monitoring solution that GRC is. Thank you for your time.